This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Head over to nordvpn.com slash YBOC to get a huge discount off a two-year plan and a month free. Plus, it just really helps the show. Hey there, nerds, or as the kids say, hey there, you thick bunch of... Savage AFs, my name is Dr. Jordan Breeding, and according to one Urban Dictionary entry, a Jordan is probably amazing at sports, but not cocky. Stubborn and hard-headed, yet loyal to the day she dies. May not have a boyfriend, not because there's anything wrong with her, but because she's too good for any typical boy, which like, <laughs> do I have a stalker who wrote that? I'm not a maybe, I'm the one. Anyway, you're watching another Wetter Than an Otter's Pocket episode of Your Brain on Crack, the only show on the internet totally down with girls who eat carrots, and the only show on Crack apparently writing its intros entirely from the trending section of Urban Dictionary. But yeah, let's go ahead and do a, a, a diagnostic fart assessment. It's real. It's in the dictionary. <laughs> Presumably every single writer in Hollywood was at some point in time a teenager, and at the very least they probably inject themselves with teenage blood to keep their organs strong and their skin moist. But you wouldn't know that from watching their movies, like they don't seem to have a good grasp on it, but thankfully they now have me, a pediatrician and obvious choice representative for the all important 13 to 19 demographic. I mean, I did just, you know, beat the hot new Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast video game. So I'm up to date, all you ABDLs. <laughs> In a movie or TV show, all it takes to turn a room into a war zone is for somebody to yell food fight, as if movie teens wait their whole lives to get just covered in cafeteria sh** food. Food fight! Has there ever been a time in your life when getting covered in objectively the worst kind of food interested you? Why would we expect it to enthrall an entire room full of carefully styled teenagers in their favorite outfits? You did not just say that! Keep talking! Someday you'll say something intelligent! In one episode of Glee, several of the senior Glee clubbers are coming to terms with how they'll soon be leaving the only school where everyone expresses themselves through song and dance for a college, where presumably they'll express themselves mostly through math and genital crushing student loans. All right, I'm not a fucking athlete. This is my fucking way. This is how I win. They half-heartedly attempt to recruit some replacements, but then BOOM! God edible purge! <laughs> In Vice Principals, two rival educators try to kill each other and just their angry presence sparks a massive food fight because apparently any chaos, whether it's life and death or plain silly fun, will ignite the volatile powder keg that is teen lunching. Oh, well then, make your move, mother We see these inexplicable random fights break out over and over and everything from Matilda to Animal House to the freaking Power Rangers. Cause just because I'm defending the world from Lord Zed does not mean I'm above trying to destroy a bunch of children with handfuls of chili, quoth the Green Ranger. Picture the aftermath of a real school food fight. You'd have to spend at least a couple of hours covered in just caked on rotting shit mixed together to form the exact recipe for vomit. And then you have to go home to your parents and explain why your pants are just freaking ruined, your phone is filled with mashed potatoes and your books are just soaked with melted jello. The cafeteria itself becomes a legitimate biohazard that no school budget is prepared to deal with. And now try to picture the actual trouble you'd be in. This actually happened in my high school growing up after a large chunk of the seniors spent months planning and organizing a fight as a prank that lasted like maybe 30 seconds, but it resulted in weeks long suspensions. Like for real goes on your record suspensions. They weren't the heroes of that story. They became the assholes trying to explain in their college essays how no, no, throwing sh food at kids is like a metaphor for world peace. Please, I will write whatever you want. Just let me go to your school so I can accrue genital crushing student debt. Wish there was a way that I can make you understand. The next five episodes of Glee should have been them quietly humming Sufjan Stevens songs from detention. And there should have been an entire subplot where they beg their principal not to press criminal charges with a salt and pepper song. And you can't simply decide to start a landfill where you stand because some 14 year old double dog dares you to. Now, wait a minute, y'all. Now this dance ain't for everybody, only the sexy people. For me, school days began with a very unwelcome alarm followed by a tough decision between personal hygiene and more sleep. Okay, it wasn't that hard of a decision. 
Goha. Once I finally got ready and maybe ate something, I'd hoof it to the bus with as close to zero seconds to spare as possible. But in movies, teenagers always begin their mornings with elaborate, professionally prepared breakfast spreads that make King Louis XIV weep with jealousy before heading over to their friends' houses or meeting up in arcades or making a quick pit stop by the home of elderly mad scientists of no relation to play guitar. High school has an average start time of like 8 a.m. and most people take around 11 to 30 minutes to get ready. So even assuming you live next door to your school, you're getting up at like 7.48 at the latest. What kind of meth addicted teenager gets up and does more than zero things before 7.48? They're teenagers, okay? They use drugs and they masturbate and they watch people playing video games on YouTube. Bill and Ted, two slacker kids failing out of school, managed to get up early enough to write, produce, and perform a music video together before school. In Superbad, Michael Sarah and Jonah Hill are awake so early, they have time to, to share their masturbation fantasies while buying a slushie before class. I flip my boner up into my waistband. It hides it and it feels awesome. I almost blew a load into my belly button. But that's just the nerds. The cool kids add an extra cool step to their extremely cool, extremely early mornings with the environmentally friendly practice of carpooling. You know, because TV teens are like so totally concerned about their carbon footprint that they willingly cram together into cars like their Bangladeshi buses. <gasps> oh my. God, the untouchables have a car. Again, this trope is specific to the school commute, not just rolling up to the Burger King on the weekends to firebomb it or whatever the kids are into. Hip teens and everything from Fast Times at Ridgemont High to 13 Reasons Why to the new Freaky movie act like driving to five different houses at the butt crack of dawn to pick up everyone before first period just fills them with the raddest, most tubular joy. Are we gonna go to school or? Nope. While pop culture would have you believe that teenagers spend all day making sex bets and then hatching revenge schemes in response to sex bets, the truth is they spend most of their time sitting in class merely learning about sex bets. If you do touch each other, you will get chlamydia and die. Real high school separates students by academic ability. In their mind, AP and honors courses help separate the future opioid addicts and the pyramid scheme victims from the future opioid sellers and the pyramid scheme creators. And yet movies, which religiously sort characters into jock, nerd, and slacker roles, still then chuck them all into the same classes, despite the fact that they'd have very different schedules. Mean Girls apparently takes place in a school with only one math class. Katie is really good at math, while Aaron is kinda bad at it, and yet they are in the exact same class junior year. Should a mathlete like Lindsay Lohan really be sitting behind the handsome boy who has to count on his fingers? I mean, what's she gonna get out of that situation other than maybe a chance to learn how to count genital warts? I'll tutor you if you ever want to get together after school or something. In The Duff, Bianca is great at science, while Wesley is a jock with grades so bad that he is academically ineligible to play football and might lose his scholarship to Ohio State University. By the end of the movie, he can't even get above a B plus, even with Bianca tutoring him every freaking day. How could they possibly be in the same class? She should be in AP Bio with all the other nerds, and he should be collecting bugs and rolling around in the grass and guessing the name of rocks while the teacher scratches his tummy and feeds him crackers between nap times. Hmm? Uh, Question? You do. Stop. The point is, this isn't a frontier classroom by a pig farm. Teachers don't throw all the kids into one room and read to all of them from the same Bible anymore. Have them mingle in something like shop class, which is the great high school course equalizer. Teen movies like to portray gym teachers and coaches as sadistic disciplinarians who must win at all costs, yet at the same time, they're also super okay with anyone walking onto the field and interrupting things. Movie football practice stops every three minutes for each player's girlfriend to walk on the field and have a long conversation with him. Like in the Duff again, the titular Duff goes right up to the quarterback as he's running drills, like that would ever be allowed. You're an honest dip and that's what counts. Thanks. Can we just, can we just cool off for a second? In 10 Things I Hate About You, a male student interrupts an all-girl archery class without anyone telling him he's not allowed to just show up there and be like, Sup, you in class? Being watched very closely by a protective gym teacher as you shoot a dangerous weapon? Cool, cool. Can I help you? I want to talk to you about prom. Once you notice this, you'll see it everywhere. In Juno, about 30 seconds into the movie, everyone's favorite quirky prego hipster interrupts a track team's cross country practice to talk to her baby daddy. Can we make out now? 
Yeah. I like boys with strong Even more than this, why do they feel the need to interrupt when most teen movies also give kids like 90 minutes between each class to trade long monologues and accuse each other of elaborate murder plans while still presumably having plenty of time to make it to their next class? What? I knew it. Skirt, skirt, what's up kids? It's me, a teen. You can tell I'm a teen because there are video games on my shirt. Teens love video games and so do I because I'm a teen. Another thing that I love is the John Wick movies. And I was gonna go on Netflix to watch them so I could become a man, but they don't have them on Netflix. They don't have them on American Netflix because we're so worried about the teens. But you know who isn't worried about the teens? Australia. So what I did instead was I just subscribed to NordVPN. Then I'm able to change my IP address to make it look like I'm in another country. They got John Wick all over their Netflix. And if you wanna get in a part of this teenage wastelanding, all you gotta do is go to nordvpn.com slash YBOC or use the code YBOC at checkout and you will get a freaking huge discount on a two year plan plus an extra month for free. And even better, they've got secure servers in over 60 countries and they don't track your data, which means that my mom can't find out that I was watching John Wick after bedtime. And if for some reason you don't like John Wick or you hate Australians, that's fine. NordVPN has a 30 day risk-free guarantee, which means you get all your money back. To sum it all up, just go yeet your way over to nordvpn.com slash YBOC or type in YBOC at checkout to get a huge discount and infinite John Wickdom. You're welcome. Cash me outside. All right, you pankers. I think I've made it clear that I really understand the teenagers of today. So on your way out, why don't you grab some Adderall so you can watch my next video in a single sitting, you tick-tocking top coat candy eaters. How do you do, fellow kids? Man, I really hope my, my grasp of the lingo will get me into 23 Jump Street whenever they make that. Huh? Yeah. What do you know, you freaking net lizard? You freaking know! F you, science. Does that make sense? To count genital warts? Yeah. After school? Or should I just say genital warts and cut it? To get and count genital warts? <laughs> like, you get what I'm saying? Like, she's gonna hook up with him and get genital warts? Yeah. A partner with which to acquire and count genital warts. Well, she could count a lot of them. She's great at math. <laughs> What's she gonna get out of that situation other than maybe a chance to count genital warts? As long as there's not more than 10. Um, something that doesn't, to be fair, not a lot of mathletes get to do. <laughs> Which actually would be pretty cool for a mathlete. F you science. <laughs>